from the banks of the Mississippi to the west side of American California. And everybody, welcome to the Cat and Cloud Coffee Podcast. This is Just the Cloud. The cat is out in the vet getting spayed and or neutered. We'll find out later, but they aren't here <laughs> either <laughs> way. Happening. No, that's not what's happening, but it'd be I guess that's I can't say that about potentially human crossover. He's still got all of his regions intact as far snip, as snap, I know, snip, snap. but you don't really know. It could be like an office situation. Yeah, snap, snip, snip, snap, snip, back, forth, back, fifth. Either way, he's not here, but instead we have, who's been frequenting the pod, Michael Fred Weiser III, and my other friend and colleague, Andre Lederhosen, which is not his last name, but that's Sub the best y'all. I can do. <laughs> so you guys all went to Honduras recently, right? Yeah, Andre and I had a nice time in Honduras. We overlapped just briefly with Charles and Dulce, who were there the first week, uh, and we we finished out a second four days or so. Yeah, it was incredible. It was yeah. one of the best trips I've ever had in my entire life. It was it was just crazy. You knew, Andre, you'd never been to Origin before, right? <clears throat> no, yeah, this was my first time. Uh, we just going to get right into it and talk yeah. a little bit about it. Yeah, so... Uh, we got in late at night, and uh, Ben Hameen Paz, uh, who listeners might know a little bit about, his brother, uh, Fidel, came and picked us up. Uh, and then for the next several days, we just <clears throat> toured a bunch of farms, uh, you know, producers that, that we've worked closely with for a long time. Um, and I got to see just from A to Z kind of how coffee is uh produced and and processed and it was like a really amazing time and i think more than just like the coffee and like the you know the the experience of like going to origin quote unquote getting to meet the people and and see these connections firsthand was probably like the most impactful and and amazing part of the trip what um what sort of connections yeah did you i feel like you had a big connection with nellen yeah well a lot of them i mean so we and I think Jared, I, I was going to ask you to kind of just like you've got a really refined, simplistic, um, you know, uh, articulation of what the Best Friends Club is. Um, but all of the producers that we work with in Honduras are a part of what's called the Best Friends Club. And if you want to dive into a little bit on sure. what that is, yeah, I mean, I don't. I we might even need to kind of go into the history and why it, it was created to begin with. But the quick answer is the Best Friends Club. All the farmer partners that we work with in Honduras, uh, if we sell a bag of their coffee, we set aside a dollar per bag, and even through wholesale, 50 cents per bag is set aside, and it is then returned back at the end of the year in some capacity to help all of these farmers uh, achieve different goals. You know, everybody has a different need, so we work in tandem with Ben Hameen, the actual farmer partner we work with, and then ourselves to, to calibrate what would be the best help and use of this money. And uh, we've done a lot of different things. So, you know, that's been exceptionally beneficial, aside from the fact that we purchase and or ensure that every bit of coffee from these partners is sold. So even if they have a big bumper crop year and we're unable personally as a company to take it, um, I've worked personally as well to liaison the sale of these coffees to ensure that these relationships are taken care of, their coffee sold. So um, places like Aloha Coffee in uh Lahui, not Lahui, well, Lahui, the town, but on Kauai, um, Stobel and Chico has used it, uh, Vertigo, uh, and potentially Day Camp has all, uh, Day Camp is a potential, but those four have picked up coffee here and in there when we haven't been able to buy an entire source. So, you know, it's relationship, actual relationship, not just, uh, yeah, because not just, uh, marketable relationship. Totally. Because you were talking about how with Ben Humming, we, Ben Hamin is our main connect for the region. You know, he's there. What is he like? The mayor of the he's the unofficial yeah, mayor of the region. I just had a, an uh, an interview with a local magazine paper. They were asking like, "What is Ben Hamin's title?" And I'm like, "Honestly, he's 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 an owner operator of the specialty coffee department of San Vicente, which is a huge meal. So yeah, he he also though you know as you experienced Michael last year and you this year, he acts almost as a father figure to every and this is this is not to be understated. Every farmer on that mountain that does specialty coffee and knows the ones who are not in specialty. So this is like, for perspective, more than seventy five, and that's an, that's a, like our entire company. And, and he genuinely is connected to them. 
he helps them in so many different ways. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. He's yes. su- such a rad guy. Like, yeah, it, he's just somebody that definitely, especially after this trip, like I look up to like the amount of like care and intention he puts in to like, not only his work, but the people that he works with is pretty incredible. And, you know, Jared going over what the best friends club is, right? Like I had, um, like I know all of that information and I've heard it for years. Right. And I've, um, told guests about it. Um, so I know on paper what the best friends club is, but going to Honduras and and, seeing it put into practice. Yeah. Actually experiencing it was like, I, it's hard to even describe. And like, like the people, you know, it's on hell, Antonio Rivera, Pedro Garcia, Nelling Guzman, Damian Chavez, Wilson Morales, Pedro Moreno. It's like, getting to meet all of these people and just know that we have this like very symbiotic relationship and we're doing things like actual things to help, um, you know, help their livelihood. I I think something that struck me about going to Honduras is like a lot of the luxuries that we have here in America, like they just don't have over there. And I, I really do think that like anything we can do to like help support their business. Um, I mean, they make some of the best coffee in the world. So uh, it's just all around. It's like a really awesome sort of uh, synergistic relationship that we have with the folks down there. So, yeah. And and there's also a quality to back that, you know, Andre, you're saying that as, and it is, and could be objective. Right. But the thing is, is, multiple years in a row consistently now the cup of excellence winner of all of honduras has come from the santa barbara mountain and so it's not it's not even per se objective that some of the best coffee in honduras comes from that mountain it is true now consistently year in and year out that's who's winning this so we personally aside from having some of ben hameen's coffee here and there don't buy the best coffee in all of honduras but we do buy coffees that are on par with that and there's many of them on that mountain that do so so yeah, I think it's cool to say and have it be more than objective that, you know, the whole country and all the the judges therein agree that the best coffees are coming from this area. And yeah. it's still a very up and coming specialty coffee area. Yeah. Starting in like 2000, between whatever, five and 10 is where it all kind of got going there. So this is a really, um, it's a young development in terms of specialty coffee. You guys are looking at me like I got Well, it. I thought maybe <laughs> you have questions, but uh, I mean- no, we're, I, I wanted to hear more about like, about the trip and like Andre, again, going back to like, what did it give you any new perspective? Like you're the roastery team leader, you interact with, you know, the green coffee all the time. Did it give you any new perspective to see well, yeah. where it comes from and the people who are making it? Totally. Or yeah. Growing it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like how we were talking about the best friends club. It's like, I've heard, a lot of things on paper. I've seen videos. I've, you know, done a lot of research, but to actually be there in person and see the coffee plants, see the drying beds, see the fermentation tanks, see all of the sorting and processing over at San Vicente. Uh, it was just, yeah, hard to describe really. And like that, all of that stuff, like seeing the coffee, uh, you know, go from the shrub all the way down to, to green coffee and us cupping it in the lab over there. That was really cool. But for me, I think what was like way more inspiring was just like connecting with Neil. And like you said, it's like we took his uh, four by four, his little Toyota pickup truck, and we were just like driving all over the mountain and we would hop out. And we, you know, I don't speak very good Spanish, but we were, you know, uh, communicating in, in what capacity we could and just like, like traveling all over the mountain, hiking up these like really steep, super sketchy slopes, uh, you know, breaking bread with Pedro Garcia in his house and like eating cake and and drinking juice and like, you know, talking. Uh, Obviously we had Ben Hameen there so we could have some translation. Um, But it was just like really, really impactful for me. And like I walked away just wanting to go back immediately. I didn't want to leave, you know. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but I just like, yeah, I had a really, really amazing time connecting with the people and then also tasting the coffee. We did some cuppings in, in Ben Hameen's lab. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were all pretty calibrated. Mm-hmm. We know what good coffee is, and um, there's a lot of it up there. Was there anything what? you were surprised by? I honestly, uh, and it might just be a little bit of ignorance on my part, but honestly, just like, you know, 
some of the luxuries we take for granted here, uh, you know, in California and the United States, um, not having those like, you know, just like air conditioning and, and certain like infrastructure things, the roads, uh, this and that, that was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, but other than that, man, I think, um, it wasn't a surprise, but I was like, it like almost like brings tears, like thinking about how hospitable, like, uh, the people that we met over there were mm. and like having dinner with Damien and his family and like, yeah, like everybody just making sure like, how are you doing? Are you good? Yeah. Uh, here's some food. Like, it's just like, we talk a lot about hospitality because that's like what we do at cat and cloud. And it was just really cool to see the folks that we came into contact with over there, just doing it on a daily basis, like in their everyday life, you know, um, everything about the trip for me was just like killer. Like it was so good. It's an impressive thing. One, one thing in a positive way, you know, I'm always looking for, I'm always looking for things that are said that mean something deeper. Yeah. Right. And I'm kind of trying to like put pieces together, um, without anyway. So something that I heard on this trip that I found interesting was Nellen, Nellen mentioned how meaningful, and I also think Pedro Garcia did, how meaningful it is that we bring somebody new every time. single year. And, and you know, the original reason for us doing that was more so for you, people like you, Andre, both of you, to be able to speak with your own words, right? To be able to share what's going on in your own words so that it doesn't sound like a bunch of jargon that the owners who, quote unquote, somebody could always say, well, the owners obviously want to sell their coffee. So obviously they're going to say all this stuff. And, you know, the more you get to know, I think Chris, Charles, and myself, you'll know that it is authentic. But, you know, if we get bigger at some point, people are going to just assume that. So it was like one of the strategies was, hey, let's bring people, let them use their own words. Yeah. The flip that I didn't know if it mattered or not was, you know, um, you know, the farmer, other farmers actually like, whoa, these are all new people. I never get to, to know them. But it was kind of the antithesis, which was, it's really exciting for us to know that different people in your company are meeting us and that they all care. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that worked both ways. And I found myself being really proud of that, even though that wasn't kind of the, the intention. And weirdly yeah, the intention was sort of out. self, you know, if I were to call myself out, not necessarily self-serving, but like trying to, 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 to paint a broader picture. Yeah. And I didn't, I hadn't thought about it from their perspective in that way, with the exception of kind of feeling a little self-conscious, like, okay, well, I'm going to make sure that I'm there because I know they want to see, you know, me as the person who helped establish this best friends club and have been there since our inception of the trip. You know, Chris and I got to go. Charles was Yeah, and personally, on, you yeah. want it, you're connected to the area. And I am. you're like- I'm invested. You, you, you're, you love it so much. Every time we go or I hear you talk about going, you just kind of get this light in your eyes where you're like, oh, I can't wait to be there because- I don't know. Every I, time, I every do. time you're there and you post on social, when you're there, it's just you can tell. You could tell. You see well, the joy. There's well, for me, there's something special about actually feeling like you're in collaboration and feeling like you're doing work that matters. And that's always a struggle as an owner. Is you're still kind of in collaboration, but the bigger you get, you're you're so less like in specifically in the in the work. So yeah. this is a place where I can one. I mean, I got to help put our fingerprint on it, which was special in and of itself but it's one of those places as well where it's like hey i'm gonna if i said it's gonna be like this i'm gonna show up and try to make sure that it is like this you know to work with us and so you know that's why i took it really uh seriously when they do have bumper crop years and it's like yo cat and cloud can't buy all this coffee specifically but i'm gonna find people who are interested in buying it to make sure that you know you and ben hameen whoever the farmer partner may be don't have to go find a new relationship like yeah. we we are the people and it's a little bit putting your money where your mouth is, but that was interesting and really cool because it means that, hey, every new person that comes here, they're genuinely excited to meet and they know, I don't know, they, they, it was cool. It was, it was yeah. just more powerful. It was really a powerful statement and I haven't exactly put anything to it other than hmm, I'm really excited that they care and that that matters. Yeah. Kinda, I guess enforces that I should, we should keep bringing people. Yeah. I mean, so, so I told one story of when I went last year, which was um, the short story. It's a of great the story. You, you should link it again. <laughs> we got to keep sending that story out. That story is very special. We I showed it to Pedro Garcia and we all cried. Yeah, I, and I had Dulce, Dulce <laughs> yeah. translated it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, onto a piece of paper. There's a bird. Um, I had Dulce translate it. Uh, I don't know if she had it when she was there, but like that was one story from it. But the other one, we had we put Nellen's coffee 
on the menu first, but when we got back, mm-hmm. and I was really excited because that was that was after I finally met him, and I was like, great, I get to finally tell a story about somebody who I've met. And the one thing I took away, one of the things I took away from meeting him is I remember him saying that he wants to, you know, be able to provide for his children so that they can get an education. He wants them to impact the world. And the only thing I could think when I, when I was there and he was saying that was this thought of, well, do they know that you're impacting the world? Sure. Do like like your kids? Do you do your kids know how much you're impacting the world? Because that mindset, and I'm I'm here to see you. I'm here to see the coffee you're growing. Like, yeah, that is that is something. I want other people to know that somebody like you is out there making something with the mindset that you have of trying to better and improve other people's lives. Sure, yeah. it's his kids. He might be a little bit partial to improving his kids' lives, but sure. it's that mentality that. I don't know. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, and that was the first story that I got to really kind of tell. I only really told it in the shelf talker we made for it, but it was something that I took away with as I, I want him to know that he's impacting the world. Well, we got to hang Why out with that? his son again for the yeah. first time. Shout since out. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't meet him. Shout out Brian. Uh, so, I mean, Andre should tell him how that's been progressing and yeah. of, of some of it very much due to us being able to buy all of his coffee as his production has consistently improved every year. That's well, awesome. I remember, so Brian's going to get an education, right? He's going um, to university. He's going to Canada. In Canada. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, First person in the dude, family. And Brian, like, if you're listening to this, super, super rad, dude. I'm so glad I got to meet you. When it comes out, tag, ta- um, send it to me so I can send him a WhatsApp tag yeah. and he'll listen. You bet. Because he's studying his English and he's getting, he's getting really good. And I very much, yeah, he was really, really good. Um, and I definitely got the feeling that he knows exactly, like, or he, he has a very good feeling for, like, the, the impact that his dad, Neilan, is having. Um, he was just, like, the most rad dude. And, uh, like, all the, most of the, the producers that we work with over there have, like, big families. And, mm-hmm. like, yeah. all of their kids were just, like, so awesome. And, like, yeah, you just got such a warm feeling. And, and you could see, like, there's a lot of love and, like, the connection. That's something that I took away from the trip that I was, like, very much, uh, I was, like, wow, that's really amazing. Because, I mean, here, like, for sure, like, there's a lot of families that are super tight. But over there, like, family is is everything. Not to get, like, uh, you know, too weird about it. But With it's Dominic just, like. Dominic Toretto. And- yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, like, yeah, Saturday. fast and furious. Um, but it's, like, dude, on on one street, it's like your entire family is living there. Like everybody is like so close knit and, um, yeah, I'm sort of getting off on a tangent. So Brian, you're good. He is a super smart kid. He's going up to Canada, uh, to go to university. And then from there, he's, uh, most likely, well, you know, he's, he's going to find his own path, but he'll probably like stay out there. There's an option, right. With that visa to like stay in Canada and and become a citizen out there. And he like very much knows that like, like this is an amazing opportunity and he really wants to like make his dad proud. And and it was just like a really cool thing to see. Not only that to me too, but what was felt heavy is that he genuinely expressed that he's super scared because he's about to leave everything that he knows in his entire family as a whatever about like 18 year old kid to go live in Canada and probably not come back anytime soon. Yeah. You know? And so, and you're totally right though. He's, he's very excited, but he kept more than, more than four times. He was like, I'm really scared, but I'm I'm embracing the challenge and I can do it, you know? And, And we're obviously encouraging him. And, um, but he's like walking through the whole process. You know, he's got to get all these, so many different tests. He has to pass an English test. And so we're practicing English with him and it's, you know, it, I personally would be really stressed out at the concept of being that person. Sure. Oh yeah. You know, like everybody in my family is looking to me and I, I hear these stories. I mean, there's stories in movies, there's stories in books, like, and they are very real and true. And I think some of us have experienced that in a extremely minor way comparatively to having to literally leave your country, maybe never come back and, you know, go get a job and a career and start sending money back to your family. And that's, that's very much the norm in Honduras and many, many other countries actually. So, you know, mad shout outs, but it does, it does add a level of weight to what we do there for me. You know, it adds a lot of responsibility and meaning. There's only so much you can do. Obviously we're not a charity and 
because we have to also provide for people who live in the most expensive city in all of America. Thanks, whoever you are. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> tech money. Yeah. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it, it is that heavy when when we get all of this positive affirmation, this outpouring of love and hospitality and... And it feels personal because I was the first one there and they are speaking to me and Cat and Cloud because I'm sitting there, but it's like, damn, this is a lot of weight. I mean, Andre got to sit in on on Damien in a couple conversations that were, which we probably shouldn't talk fully about here, but conversations that were him asking me significantly in-depth advice about what he should do with his family in regards to like huge monetary spending, very personal, yeah. like life altering it's things you would ask your best friends yeah these things that you would ask and that's more than you're like i don't know man for in, <laughs> in america we were we probably wouldn't even talk about it with most people sure yeah. that's a cultural so thing but it's, i think it's cultural and also like it's an honor but right it's this mix yeah. of honor and weight where you're like whoa okay but that's we take this seriously that's why i think the best friends club for me has been something that's been really hard to articulate because Sure, if you look at it from a high level, there is this, we buy coffee and we give proceeds back. Right. You could just, if you're putting it super sure. simply, Tom's it's Tom's does that too, one for one. But it's, but it's, it's so much more to. of an investment in the people's lives yeah. of us being there and dedicating that we are going to grow with you. And I, yeah, it's just, it's a really impressive thing when you hear about it and hear how over time you... You've seen Damien grow. Yeah. You've seen the region grow. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and it's not like we're, we're not saying, oh, we did that. We're saying, no. oh, look how it awesome it is when you go and you support people around you. I think everybody could take their own, yeah, their own version of what we're doing in some capacity and make a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's something also to be said with working in a region and with people like Ben Hameen who are like minded. And I think. A lot of people might not understand that Ben Hamin is so much about relationship. And I might kick it over to you, Andre, because, again, everybody's heard me speak about it and so much. But you got to listen to him kind of explain the perspective of, you know, people reach out to me, Ben Hamin, who's mm -hmm. in charge of connecting these relationships yeah. and selling this coffee, right? The specialty coffee. And they say, I want some of, for example, right or wrong. This might not be the literal example, but why can't we get some of Damien Chavez's coffee? we, you know, like we are this and we are that and like vying for it. Why can't we get insert another coffee company's relationship? And that, you know, I won't, I'll send it over to you, Andre, but he, he works as well on the concept of relationship. Yeah. It's not about who's going to pay me the most money yeah. and pay them specifically the most money, even though in the world you may argue that that's good, but he had a perspective on that. That's not specifically only about the money because, the industry is volatile, you yeah. know, the relationships are actually what matter and sustain the, the area. Yeah. It was like so refreshing to hear everything that, I mean, Ben, I mean, just such like a, he's just such a good guy. Yeah. Like exactly to what you were speaking to, like in any industry, there's thick and thins, there's ebbs and flows, like, like coffee, like the yield is not always going to be the best. Like the quality is, is going to fluctuate. And it's like, are we going to put our money where our mouth is and, and like stick with these relationships through thick and thin, like, you know, buy somebody's coffee when maybe, you know, last year it scored 88 this year, it scored 86. Like, are, are we still going to buy their coffee? And I think for us, it's a no brainer. It's like, yes, like we understand that these relationships are super, super important. And, and Ben Hameen, like he knows, he knows all of this inside and out. And it's like, that's why he's not going to just, sell like the high you know a 90 point coffee to just somebody who's going to outbid everybody else it's like do you actually care about these people like you know are you are you going to buy their coffee no matter what like even if it wasn't the highest selling coffee and and that was just really cool to me it was kind of like ah, it was just sick dude it was well he vouches for them right like yeah. he he almost goes to to bat for them before oftentimes before he actually has a buyer you know and he's yeah. like okay you got this amount of coffee i'm going to find a place for it yep and if you're willing to invest in your time and money and resources and work, which is a lot more to be in specialty coffee, if you're willing to do that, I'm going to find you a home. Yeah. And he he puts his money where his mouth is. And that's where it is so important for him to work in relationship. Because when people maybe buy a, a shit ton of coffee and then they're like, yeah, I'm in it to win it. We're buying 
a hundred bags every season from this group of people. And then they're like, just kidding. He's got a hundred bags of coffee. Sure. Which he can find places for most likely. Yeah. But the people who he prom made, maybe not promises to, but he, who he's speaking for and trying to help have also invested all their time and their money. And again, coffee's a yearly crop. You know, you yeah. might, you get, they get one shot per year and that shot is all of their income, <laughs> you know? Pound, it, pound of coffee per tree, approximately. Yeah. It was it was really funny because... I don't know about funny. I don't know why I said that. It was really interesting. Thought-provoking. Thought, it was very... Well, for me, a perspective that I came away with when I went to Origin last year, when I went to Honduras last year, was this almost... I've been trying to figure out how to articulate it and how to write it and... Because it's really two-sided. I saw this really interesting symmetry to the coffee world. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's just as many ways as there are to brew a coffee as there are as many ways there are to, like, varietals. Yeah. So there are, th- there are three different levels. There's, there's grow and brew, then there's process and roast, and then in the middle there's two, there's buy and sell. Uh, and I it's just like there's at. symmetry right in the middle there. And the... That was almost, that was also reinforced with seeing the people in the production su- side of things, see people in the growing side of things, where when we were in Honduras, I think I heard Cup of Excellence said as many times as I've heard people in the cafe talk about latte art. Yeah. And it just, for me, that's helped reinforce the symmetry where for me, it lit up something going, oh, they care about the exact same things we care about. They're trying to produce a good a product as good of a product as we're trying to produce it's they just are seeing things in a different world they're trying to provide for their families by creating an amazing product just the same way we're trying to provide for ourselves and our families by creating an amazing product Mm -hmm. like we care the same we're just in different parts of this world yeah and it was just this really interesting thing that helped me bridge this gap of being you know how many miles away from home and so it was just oh we're I can't speak your language, but I know what you care about mm-hmm. when your daughter comes up next to you and you have this moment of, this is my family. And it's, I don't know. It, it was just wow. a really interesting perspective. Mm-hmm. So it just reinforces the relations side of things to where yeah. it takes that business side of it kind of out. And you're like, oh, I'm, I don't know. I yeah. don't know what was going with that. But. Well, I mean, well, I, one thing that I just consistently experience every time we go and it reinforces it. It's just like, man, there's so many stories and opportunities for connection. How do you tell them? How do you get them, you know, past that level, right? Where Andre is like, and I think there's a way. There's, it's going to be impossible comparatively to bringing somebody. But there's ways, by the way, this isn't to like put fire under your buns, wiser, because you're. Uh, you, there's only so many things you can do. But I can do everything. At a time, you can do everything, but uh, <laughs> how much time? And But that is, I, th- I feel like such an important thing is the storytelling telling stories and getting connected is is the challenge but it's also the opportunity you know and it always has been and it's tough i think the the thing for me again going kind of back to the best friends club and articulating what it means is it's i don't think it's ever been we've ever tried to make it be the answer for everyone no it's always just been an example of hey this is the power that happens when you connect yeah you can do it too so sure. same thing for us. It's just these are the tori- these these are the stories we're experiencing. Mm-hmm. You can have the same stories when you go and connect and put intention into a relationship or yeah. into a a friendship. Yeah. And like this was one of the questions that I wanted to ask, which was like, why Honduras? What got us to have this relationship there? Because yeah. there's you know, Chuck loves Guatemala, or sure. so it's like, what what is it about Honduras that makes us love it so much (laughs) well the thing i i believe so far so i've been i have only been to guatemala honduras and costa rica Mm -hmm. and so i can't speak for the entire country's buying processes right but based on my experience you know it all is um, you can get amazing coffee everywhere Mm -hmm. right um great people in guatemala great people in costa rica but to me, very clearly and uniquely, Honduras is behind in terms of, well, they're not only behind, 
in terms of uh, people buying specialty coffee there. But they're also, again, thanks to Ben Hameen, uniquely suited to work in relationship. Mm. Whereas my experience fairly clearly at in Costa Rica was somebody's going to buy our coffee no matter what. And we make specialty coffee. It's really, really awesome. Whether it's you or whether it's them or them or them, like I know my coffee is getting sold. Some of that's because I went with an uh, importing company, sure. Yeah. But some of that also is that because of those importing companies, you know, this coffee's all in high demand. Yeah. So there's this, in my mind, that'd be like, yeah, everybody wants Benjamin's coffee because he won a cup of excellence. So like in Costa Rica, I felt like there's a lot more. In Honduras or in, in Guatemala, my experience as well, this is, there's different ways of doing this. You know, a lot of the farmers and partners that we worked with, which are awesome, still go through a liaison, but those liaisons, it's a little less like person to person farmers. Yeah. It's, it's usually us working with a few bigger heads who are connected and then they all work together. Yeah. And so uh, a lot more collectives. This is more individual, genuinely individual farmers. And so for me and Chris as well, it was really, really clear when we got to Honduras. I mean, oh, this is different. Both of us were like, man, we should have, we, because we, we had this trip where it was four days Costa yeah. Rica, two days Honduras, originally going. We're like, oh, we should have flipped that and spent way more time here. These people, you know, we're really connecting with them. We're really getting into it with them. It's not almost like a tour of who's going to buy this coffee. Yeah. So that was one part. I mean, it was so much so that both Chris and I subliminally had the same concept to buy the deep pulper for Damien on Cat and Cloud's dollar that first trip. And that was, there was some clarity, right? And let's yeah. partner. And that was before the Best Friends Club. Kind that heart was still moment. there. And it was an aha moment where if we don't show up, maybe somebody will buy that coffee. I mean, now we've made it famous enough that most people will buy all those coffees. I was looking at a photo from back in 2017, and it was like a bag of coffee on my shelf, and yeah. it was Damien Chavez's bag. Right. I mean, we, we spoke highly of him, right? We got him to be the, the most famous coffee on a spreadsheet, you know, like yeah. he won that thing. And then all of a sudden the whole country thinks that he's a rich farmer and it actually almost backfired for him because he was all sketched out <laughs> and people started trying to come and extort him legitimately because oh. that's how third world countries can be sometimes. And they were, it was, anyway, stuff we don't expect, you know, oh, it's a, an award. It's good, right? And it's like, eh, not if you actually don't have... It gives you a lot of uh, visibility. It doesn't always help. All that to say, <laughs> reining it back in, it was clear that we were working on genuine relationship there. Yeah. Person to person, us with them. You know, they're asking us about how much we're going to pay for the coffee. They're asking us about quality. They're asking us about what's going to sell. Vice versa, how can we help you? And that is different than... Anywhere else I've experienced, you know, governments involved in places like Ethiopia and Kenya. There's, there's not so many places where you can work this way. And again, all that goes out to someone like, I think, Ben Hameen, who sees this as valuable. And that's why it's important to me that we work with them. And that's what the Best Friends Club, that's one of the reasons the Best Friends Club exists is we know and we can work back and forth with how this works. And we can see where that money goes. And it's not like, yeah, we're going to go send it to somebody who doesn't actually need it. Because um, we all know that anybody in the whole world could use more money. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's that's not the point. It's not to just give that. And I felt that way in a different, in a different sense, you know, both in uh, Guatemala and Costa Rica. But I also, if I'm really clear, like the people that I experienced in Guatemala... And this is my experience. There's probably um, socioeconomically a lot smaller farmers I I investing in these areas that we didn't get to see. They were all doing fairly well. Same with the Costa Rican farmers I visited. They were all doing fairly well. Hmm. So there was a clear juxtaposition in my three experiences. Yeah, something I experienced in Honduras that I'm just like kind of thinking about is there's a very, with all of the producers that I met, like there's a very clear alignment and values, right? So like one of our values is we actively pursue better and, and also it's like an unofficial value, but I think at Cat and Cloud, like we do more with less, right? And you could very clearly see that it's like with Damien Chavez, right? He's like doing like these like cool anaerobic processes and like, um, he's, he did a honey, honey anaerobic process which was really cool um 
and we kind of work together and and kind of come up with like what might be cool like what's something that we could do to like push the envelope and and actively pursue better and you also see it with like pedro garcia and um and neil and guzman like planting like new and different varieties and like keeping their keeping their farms like super clean and i just think it's it's just really awesome to see like oh th like you were saying earlier it's like we all do the same stuff it's just different mediums that we do it on um so that was just like a little thought i was having for a second there and then you also uh, i'm kind of going in a totally different direction but um you were talking about stories earlier mm -hmm. I just think it was really cool, dude. Like we had full plans to go see Wilson, uh, Wilson Morales's farm. Right. Yeah. And then we like the day totally took a different turn and it was Jared's birthday, uh, on our trip. And Wilson was like, yo, no, we're not going to go check out the farm. We're going to take you out to the super nice restaurant, your favorite restaurant yeah. in Honduras. Fried fish. Lake right? fish. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and we're going to go celebrate proper. And, and they had a cake and like the whole nine. And well, it was just. The whole family came from St. Yeah. Pedro Sula, including like the 90 some year old grandfather. Yeah. Wow. And like, it's just, I have never been to like, you know, Jared was speaking a little bit to other origins. This is like the first experience I had going to origin. And um, so I'm a little inexperienced in that realm, but I did walk away from this experience feeling like this is something really special. And like, something that we really should foster and like it just you know and you get that gut feeling that like this is like the right this mm -hmm. is the right thing like this relationship feels right and like yeah it, that's what's I, hard to explain right yeah you feel that as soon as you get there you're like oh yeah. i get it yeah like yeah yeah and i can't nice. even yeah. speak to like the other uh other places i would love to go to guatemala and costa rica colombia um all beautiful all special i would love to go anywhere um but yeah i just definitely got the feeling that like this it just feels different even though i don't i haven't experienced the other uh countries yeah when you're working with something special and unique you can feel it and that's always been the case it's just interesting how for in our cafes the experience is more important than the product we sell and when it comes to buying coffee the relationship is more important than just selling the bean it is i mean a hundred fucking percent like there's no two ways about it yeah like the but people. also, like, please write, rate, review, subscribe, and buy those beans yeah. so that we can like, like keep doing it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because if you don't buy them beans, y'all. Yeah. yeah, the other but thing, right. it's not like the other thing doesn't exist. Like, no, we, we, everybody it, needs know, to I'm sell kidding. stuff and, yeah. and do that whole thing. Like, we need to play the game. But by and large, like, we care about the people more oh, than, than the coffee. And, you know, quality is obviously important to us. We're always going to source very good quality coffees. Luckily, the folks in Honduras that we work with have amazing coffees, mm. so we don't have to sacrifice one for the other. Um, but if we can, we want to like take care of our friends over there, hundred exactly. percent. Yeah, the experience is what makes the memories, and the memories are what make us want to come back. Let's create more memories, dude. And that's that's selling all the yummy coffee because that coffee's delicious. Hey everyone, that's the podcast for the week. Thanks so much for listening. If you heard something that inspired you, let us know or tell a friend. These are the types of connections that are the most important to us and that we seek to create every day. If there's something you heard and you want to know more about, send us an email to podcast at catandcloud.com or head to our website, catandcloud.com slash podcast and let us know. While you're on our site, check out everything we have to offer. Dive deep into one of our single origin coffees or pick up a little treat for yourself. We have something for everyone, so check it out. Also, find us in the usual places, YouTube, Instagram. We're always there sharing amazing things. All right, that's it. Thanks everyone for being awesome. We'll be back next week. <laughs>